Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I am Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. The way we do that here on First Five is by spending time together studying the Word of God and in prayer. And so, if you've been with us, you know that every morning I ask you to read with me one chapter of Scripture. And so we have most recently begun studying our way through the book of Acts, or what's called the Acts of the Apostles. It's the story of the early Christian church. And so today, we come to Acts chapter 4, and so my hope would be that when we're all done, you'll take a few moments and read the whole of Acts chapter 4. Acts is a great book. It reads really well. It's all stories of the early church and the things the disciples did. And it's, it's exciting. It's fun to read, so I know you're going to enjoy it. Now, for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 13 through 20. So, if you have your Bible handy, or if you want to pull it up on your phone app, I invite you to join me in Acts chapter 4, and we'll begin in verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin, and they conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judge. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Ah, love it. So, to set some context, uh, in the previous chapter, if you were with us on Friday, you may remember that we saw Peter and John had healed a man who had been lame from birth, never able to walk. Now, this miracle drew many people to them. And they used that as an opportunity to preach to all the more about the hope of the resurrection and the teachings of Christ and the new life that comes through him. Of course, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes and the priests and all that are very upset. They are disturbed by all of this preaching about Jesus. They've been trying to stop this and keep it from going any further. They want to squelch this movement before it can get any more traction. So, they have the men arrested. And even though they have nothing to stand on, they threaten the men, James, uh, Peter, and John, rather, and tell them to preach no more in the name of Jesus. All of that brings me to my favorite line in the chapter, verse 20. Let's look at this one more time. It says in verse 20, this is Peter speaking, As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Basically, they are saying, we are compelled to share the gospel, right? We, we literally can't help ourselves, right? This is the good news. We couldn't hold this in if we wanted to. There's just no holding it back. Can I ask you, have you ever had an experience in your life where you had something inside of you that you just couldn't hold in, that you couldn't hold back. Maybe, maybe you got some great news, right? Something had happened in your life. You got great news and you just can't wait to share it. I mean, you want to share it with anyone, with everyone. Pretty soon you're 
texting everyone in your phone and you're you're calling up your family and and you're talking to people in the grocery line because you just can't help but tell people this great news that you just got or maybe maybe it's a surprise maybe you're preparing a surprise for someone that you love and care about and and it's just bubbling up within you and you trying your best to hold it in, but you really just can't. So pretty soon you start giving them hints and you try and get them to, to guess at it. And then finally you just can't help it. And you just blurt it out. Some things are just hard to keep in. So here's my question. Do we feel that way about Jesus? I mean, what better news is there than that God sent His only Son to give up His life to pay a price for sin that we could not pay so that you and I could have eternal life? What more exciting news could there be than that there is hope for all? that every one of us can experience the forgiveness of sin and the hope of eternal life. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's awesome. And the disciples, having had this life-changing encounter with Christ, could not help but tell everyone, everyone. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter that they got arrested. It didn't matter uh, how they were treated. It didn't matter if they were punished. They just had to continue to proclaim the gospel. And can I just say, that's how I want to be about my faith. And that's how I hope you want to be about your faith. I've had a life-changing encounter with Christ. And I hope you have too. And I want to be so excited about it that I can't help but tell everyone. And no amount of social pressure or uh, political correctness is going to keep me quiet. I just can't help but tell everyone. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, let that be our heart like these disciples who couldn't help but preach, no matter how much they were threatened or arrested or anything else, they couldn't hold it in. They couldn't help but tell people the good news. Lord, let us feel like that. Let us have that kind of passion and excitement about our encounter with you, that we just can't, no matter what pressure we feel, no matter what culture is saying, and we just can't hold it in. We just can't help but tell everyone about Jesus. Lord, let that be our experience and our hearts. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.